Hi guys, welcome to the Crouch Ranch. Today we're gonna to talk about how to instill some healthy habits uh, in yourself and in your kids with how to incorporate some more healthy choices in your diet. I know as moms, we get busy, as dads, we get busy. We grab whatever is closest, whatever's easiest, whatever's fastest and cheapest sometimes, not realizing that in the long run, we're actually doing more harm than good in a lot of ways. So let's talk about that. We've all had those friends, or maybe we are that friend that has the kid that's the super picky eater, that when you go out with the kids to the park or to an event, that that kid will only eat a raw hot dog out of the, the Ziploc baggie that you've got in your purse, or that kid will only eat Cheerios, or that kid will only eat fill in the blank, right? We've all run across that kid or have had that kid at some point or another in our life, right? So here's a little bit of way around that, okay? What we did with our daughter was, Mike obviously is very into gardening, and at the time we had um, a respectable garden considering, you know, the area we were living in. Um, and he would take Frankie out into the garden every day um, after preschool in the evenings, and he would garden with her. And she would have her little toy you know, spade and little stuff. And she would dig around in the dirt and help him plant the seeds and help him harvest the carrots and the radishes and the broccoli and the peas and things as they became ready. So she was really excited because she had put in the effort at that young age, even though, you know, she wasn't really doing the gardening, you know, she felt like she was. And she was excited to get that food in her belly to taste it. Sometimes she would just brush the dirt off of it and eat it while they were still in the garden. And it really kept her excited about veggies, excited about eating the things that were healthier for her and that were better choices. Um, so I know that not everybody has a green thumb because I don't. If Mike wasn't a gardener or into plants, we wouldn't have the plants that we have. Um, hi guys, welcome. Hello, hello, Shakara. Hi, Jen. Hi, Backwoods. Hi, guys. Mirka. That's right. Yes, Fritos are not a, a food group. That's right, John. <laughs> so um, one of the things that you can do is, of course, plant a garden with your kid. Um, if you have limited space in your yard or your apartment, if you have a little terrace, you can do a little terrace garden and just grow simple things. Grow things like herbs. Um, little things that you can say, well, what can we cook with these herbs? Let's, you know, go find some vegetables that would go well with these herbs or, you know, and take the kid to the store with you. It's kind of a pain. I know, especially during certain ages, it's really hard to take them to the store with you or to take them to the farmer's market, but try to do it often enough that they feel like they're contributing to the household menu. If you're not able to grow the stuff yourself, if you can hit, you know, a locally supplied grocer that has vegetables that are from your area and seasonal, that will also help in a few ways. It'll help your kid understand that they also have some control over what they're putting in their body and why, um, that they want to try this weird looking vegetable they've never seen before. Well, let's, let's look it up. One of the great things about Google, right? You can look it up. If you've never seen it before, you can Google it and be like, oh, it's a leak. Who knew? Okay, let's make soup, you know, um, or a stir fry or whatever, you know, and that's also going to be cool for you because you're going to, it's going to help you create different meals. We've all gotten in that rut where we're like, okay, tonight's spaghetti. Okay, tonight's mac and cheese. Okay, tonight's chili and repeat, right? So this will kind of help you get out of that rut while also helping you guys as a family eat healthier and get the kids excited so you won't have to hear mom, what's for dinner? And then you tell them and they go, that again, I don't want to eat that. I'm going to eat a cracker instead. Like this is, you know, we've all had that same go around with our kids at some point or another, but it does help if they're able to kind of be involved in it, you know, whether it's taking them to the store and letting them decide, you know, when Frankie was little, you know, in the off season of, of Mike's garden, I would say, okay, you know, should we get zucchini tonight? What should we make with the zucchini this week? Okay, you don't want zucchini? Well, what else do we have? What other green vegetables are here that we can choose from? And she would, you know, go through and help me decide. And that would kind of help plan my menu for the week. Um, so 
<laughs> now you want to stir fry right on. So it does. It works really well with kids that are picky eaters. And then there's also a little bit of tough love that we like to add to that as well. I am a big proponent of tough love. Um, I don't believe in giving in because my kid whines at the store that they want something. If you ask Frankie what the chip and cookie aisle is called, it is the bag of poison death aisle. <laughs> <laughs> she knows and um, you know that's not to say that I don't ever let my kid have a cookie or that we don't ever eat anything that isn't healthy that's ridiculous of course we do um, but we don't do it every day we don't do it every week we don't do it every month um, you have to limit it so part of you know instilling those healthy habits is teaching them that you know when you're hungry that means that your body needs nutrients. That means that your body needs fuel. What's going to fuel my body? Is a bag of chips full of chemicals and fake dyes going to fuel my body and give me energy? Or is some broccoli and some a healthy lean protein and, you know, or and some healthy fats from avocados or, you know, is that going to help fuel my system? So they get to learn what those healthy choices are and how to build off of that. And I think that's super important. So, exactly, yeah, and you have to, like, they have to try something. That's exactly right, Jennifer. She's saying there's uh, three no thank you bites. So I, I totally agree with you. Like, uh, there's a few things that Frankie has tried and she doesn't like them. She doesn't like mushrooms. She's tried them many times. We've tried different varieties of mushrooms. Um, I've tried letting her pick out the mushrooms she wanted to pick out just because she liked the name shiitake. So she was like, Mom, let's try these mushrooms. And I was like, she's like, maybe I'll like these because I don't like all the other ones. And I'm like, okay, we'll try shiitake mushrooms. So I made something with shiitake mushrooms. And guess what? She doesn't like mushrooms. So I don't make her eat them because... There's so many things that she has tried that she does like that the few things that she doesn't like, that list is so small. It's like onions and mushrooms and black pepper. She doesn't like black pepper. Everything else, she's pretty much like, at least she gives it a try, you know. So you got to do what you got to do, right? Picking those fruits and vegetables if they're able to. Um, another great thing to look for is these community gardens are popping up everywhere now, even in really, really urban areas. Um, get on the internet, guys. Find your local community garden and drag your kids out there on a Saturday and let them help. Let them plant something. Let them go pick some stuff. Get them excited about what grows out of the ground and what nourishes their body. That's super, super important because we're so far removed from our food in a lot of ways um, that kind of getting an idea of what it takes, the work go that goes into growing that food and sustaining that food um, and having the kids have an understanding of that is really important. Yeah, Jennifer, actually, one of I have a, a friend who's got kids um, that, that have sensory issues and some that have um, autism. And one of the things that they did that I thought was super smart was, um, and this is, of course, tailored individually to the kid because every kid is at different levels. And, and um, But her kid was super into SpongeBob at the time. This was years ago. Um, not that SpongeBob still isn't super popular, but her kid was super into SpongeBob. SpongeBob and everything was about the Krabby Patty, Krabby Patty cakes. And so she found ways of saying, well, this is from, this is from SpongeBob. And she would load it up with the veggies and load it up with all, and she would make like these little patties out of that stuff and make healthy little meals and get him to eat that way with saying, this is a crusty burger, but it was actually, you know, whatever else she crammed in there. And well, this is from, you know, this is whatever the thing from the show was, you know, I'm not up on all the, the lingo of that, but I think I got most of that right because Frankie watches SpongeBob sometimes. So I think little things like that. And of course, you know your kid and what their limits are, but um, you know, little ideas like that, get creative, you know? You had to get creative to become a parent in the first place. You might as well continue the creativity in a different area, right? You got to have an outlet for it somewhere. So, It's true backwards. Yeah, you do. He's saying you can make your kids eat healthy, but you can slack off yourself. And that's totally true. Um, I'm going to call Mike out on this one. Mike is guilty of that. 
Mike will sometimes forget his lunch at home um, or be in a rush and he'll, you know, grab something that's left in the lunchroom at work that maybe is not as healthy as, and he'll come home and he'll be like, man, I shouldn't have eaten that today. I feel bad about it, you know. So it's real easy to do that when, you know, we're at home, Frankie's eating breakfast, taking lunch to school and eating dinner at home. It's really easy to keep her on a, you know, a healthy run of food, but it's real easy as an adult when we have our own wallets and cars and we can just, well, I really want a taco right now. I'm going to go get a taco and a Slurpee, whatever, you know. And it's real easy to like, you know, sneak it on the side and your kids have no idea. <laughs> so I think as adults, especially, you know, if you're lucky enough to be in a, a two parent household, if you can kind of keep each other accountable <laughs> or even like, you know, a really good girlfriend, I used to do that with some of my friends. I would text them in the morning. They, it was our, our uh, workout wake up call. <clears throat> and I would text them in the morning, get their butts out of bed and get them working out. And they loved it. And we did that for quite a while. And so, you know, and it kept each other accountable. We had our own little face group page of just us. And we would post, you know, little inspirational things and say if one of us was having a hard time or really craving something, the other ones would talk us down and say, go for a walk, you know, whatever. So that kind of thing would, would really, you know, be beneficial, you know, to kind of keep you on track when you're wanting to stray a little bit. But yeah, definitely look into those community gardens. Those are awesome. Um, <laughs> sandwich we looked at. Yes, exactly. <laughs> yes. And then, you know, once you've either picked or gone shopping together, um, you know, bring them into the kitchen. I know sometimes we're busy and we can't do it every night. But, you know, on a Friday evening or on a Saturday when you're home and you're not rushed for time, you know, have them help you, you know, age appropriate things. If they're not old enough to start wielding knives yet, you know, have them wash the lettuce or have them wash the vegetables, have them, you know, set the timer for you when you're getting the oven going and explain to them like, you know, oh, okay, let's put a dribble of olive, olive oil on this and some garlic and then it's got to bake, you know, for at 400 for 15 minutes. So let's see, you know, how do we set that on here and teach them how to use the stove, the oven, and why it needs to cook that heat and why it needs to be on that rack instead of that rack and do we cover it or not cover it. Like start teaching them those basic life skills because I think that's one of the reasons that, you know, everybody gives millennials such crap right now is because the generation that raised those millennials kind of slacked off in some ways when it came to that. It was, it was, and that was the cultural thing that we kind of took a big nap as a culture, I think. We sort of just, we, we got into the fast food and what was convenient and easy. And we forgot about, you know, where our food comes from and the life skills required to maintain a level of existence if everything shuts down, if that stuff wasn't available. Um, there's just basic skills that some of us lack nowadays. But, and I don't mean to call out millennials specifically, but they are the easiest ones to point a finger at and say, you guys can't boil water, <laughs> you know? So um, just, you know, just saying. But, um, but, but with that being said, hi, drive shaft, hi guys. So, you know, with that being said, there is no cat in my dresser today. Thank God. He's actually in the bathroom sink, believe it or not. He's in the bathroom sink. That's his new favorite spot to hang out. Um, but yeah, so, I mean, you, you've got to, <laughs> uh, that's a funny comment. Um, not even going to repeat it though, but that was funny. That was a good one, Adam. Um, thank you, D power. So yeah, so I mean, just keeping that in mind, you know, teach them basic things, how to steam vegetables, right? Show them how to steam some veggies, show them like simple stuff. And all you have to do to steam veggies you've got the pot with the water and the little basket and you just put a little olive oil or coconut oil or grapeseed oil, whatever the oil is that you like and you know, throw a little garlic on there or some black pepper or, you know, whatever the seasoning is that you like. Sometimes I'll throw some herbs in there out of the garden and just to give it a little, you know, fragrance and flavor, you know, so having them involved in that is going to make them at least more excited about trying it. And once you can get them to try it, 
and then also if you kind of eventually if you get to the point where you make it their only option they're going to eat it because they're not going to starve themselves so let's be realistic <laughs> but right well that's not the main coon that's my tabby that's in the sink the main coon is still penned up to go outside and then mama kitty is a main coon she's outside too but but yeah i don't know what the, i've never had a cat that slept in the sink before but oh, it's weird i know i know so that's yeah so that's in a nutshell kind of my version of getting over it there's you know there's a certain amount of as a parent putting your foot down and just not allowing them to have what they want when they want it and if if Frankie, there's nights where Frankie's gotten in a schnitt and she's decided, I'm not eating that. I don't like it. I'm like, well, that's what's for dinner. So if you don't eat this, you're not going to eat dinner. And she'll be like, fine. You know, and she's held out. There's There's been a couple nights where she was in a snit and she just decided that I'm not going to eat that. And I'm like, okay, well, sorry about your luck, Chuck. You know, and then she'll usually come back and she'll be like, okay, I'll eat some just plain veggies. I don't want, you know, whatever else that I cooked with it or however else I prepared it. She wanted them just raw. And so I'm like, okay, that's fine. You can have just some raw veggies. That's cool. And she'll do that because she's gotten on this kick lately where, and it was kind of a weird transition where she decided cooked vegetables she didn't like. She got on this thing where she only likes them raw. So I'm like, okay. So when I'm cooking a meal, I separate some veggies out for her that I don't cook. And then I give her, you know, whatever, if we're having, you know, a little bit of chicken or whatever else I've made, you know, with it. And then she has her raw veggies and she likes it. So, oh, yay, Mower Man. Thank you for signing up for Patreon. Thank you. Yeah, Mike's, uh, Mike threw out his back this week and it's been threatening it for like a week and a half or so he's been saying man something ain't right and he thought he was maybe getting a kidney stone because of the area that he gets this like spasm in so exactly moody yeah don't give him any choices and they'll eat so it's it's kind of like that he gets this little like oh twinge going and he's like he gets then he gets anxiety about it so um he was in quite a bit of pain was it monday what's today what today's thursday not monday Tuesday and Wednesday, he was in quite a bit of pain. So um, I've got some essential oils coming for him. Um, hopefully, I think they'll be here tomorrow morning or tomorrow afternoon or something. I don't know, soon. Um, and then, um, but that also has kind of slowed down his editing <laughs> for the week and our shooting. And I'm also nervous because I've got a whole batch that has to be butchered this weekend. And I have a feeling Mother's Day is going to be spent flying solo. I think I'll be with, probably have Frankie assisting me, but I'll basically be doing a bunch of birds, I think by myself. I don't think he's going to be up for it. Um, so we'll see how that goes. It's not super exciting, but you got to do what you got to do. So <laughs> I know I feel bad for him, but at the same time, I'm like, really, dude, you've got great timing, but what are you going to do? So He'll be taking it easy for the next however long. And then um, hopefully I can bang out those birds with Frankie's assistance this weekend and get it done. Because uh, I just got a whole nother batch of um, Cornish today, my last batch. Um, so those guys are in the brooder now. Um, so we'll see. We'll see. Oh, thank you. A lot of compliments on the shirt today. I know, our, speaking of shirts, our, our shirts have not come yet. Our sample shirts have not arrived as of noon today. Um, so I will, of course, continue to check the mail. I'll keep my fingers crossed that they'll be here by Sunday. So when we do our live, um, we'll be able to have them and launch, the, launch that this week. Um, so fingers crossed, but we'll see. We'll see. I'm not. I'm not sure if they'll if they'll be here in time or not. But but uh, oh, that's a great idea. Yeah, pick out the salad items and then let the kids do it. It's exactly yeah. Let them pick out the salad items and then you guys prepare it. Or you know, that's a great. Especially when they're younger, that's a great option. Of course. And then the nice thing about that is if you start them out at those small levels and you start kind of stepping them up slowly over time. By the time they're a teenager, they think nothing of you know. Tuesday night is my night to make dinner from start to finish or, you know, however you work that out with them, you know, the, 
you know, when you do your grocery shopping for the week, they say, okay, well, I'm going to cook dinner, you know, and you have them cook the meal one night a week. That's a great thing to do. It takes some pressure off mom and dad. It's teaching them a skill. It's allowing them to figure out what they want to cook and research a recipe and make sure you have the ingredients in the house. And is it within the budget for that week to make X, Y, and Z? I mean, that's a great thing for them to start learning because you only have them for a few short years before they're out on their own. And they it's like, you know, are they going to live off a of ramen their entire life? You know? <laughs> so you got to do it. But, oh, I love it. I love it. That's perfect. Yeah. So anyway, so we'll see. Hopefully those shirts will be here on Sunday. Well, hopefully, fingers crossed. And then I'm hoping we can still stick to, I may be covered in blood. Just fair warning on Sunday. In fact, if, if we do the live at, nor, at normal time at 1 o'clock, I can guarantee you I'll be covered in blood. I'm hoping that maybe what we'll do is do it first thing in the morning, do the live. I don't know. We'll have to see. That's A lot of that's going to depend on how Mike is feeling and if I'm doing it alone or, or what. I might just have Mike go on and do the live and I might just continue to butcher birds. We'll see. <laughs> we'll see how that goes. But... Um, I know. Well, he's had that problem for a while. And the funny thing is, is I actually, I don't have a great back myself. I have a, I have spinal issues as well. So, um, but I found certain ways to deal with it. And his, he has very different issues with his back and neck than I have. Um, so, and his flare up in different ways than mine do. And I think because I had mine at such, mine started at such a young age, because they pretty much think I was like born with it that way. Um, and I remember from the time being in like second grade on, I remember having back and neck pain. Um, and then it progressed into hip pain because of the way the curve is. So I've learned to deal with it because it's just, it was a normal, it was just how I always felt. So it wasn't like something that just came on one day. It was like part of my life. And so, um, you know, I just kind of, figured out how to deal with it but his is very different and his will be fine be fine be fine and then all of a sudden boom it hits him so where mine is kind of constant steady and then it and not to the same degree I'm not you know but um I can feel when it's going to get bad whereas his usually just hits him harder and fast and drops him so this time wasn't as bad but we're still being cautiously optimistic about this particular episode because sometimes it's we think it's over and then he'll all of a sudden like you know, reach for the pepper at dinner and he'll be like, ah, I can't move, you know, so we'll see, we'll see how that goes, but, uh, uh, hello, I know, I know, well, I'm sure he'll be listening to this on the way home, he'll be, he'll probably be thinking, she better not be talking, you know what, about me, I'm not, babe, I'm not, so, anyway, I know. Well, the problem is too is, you know, he, he sits at a desk, he edits the videos, he sits at a desk at work, and then he comes out here and does like intense manual labor. So it's very extreme ends of the sedentary scale and the active scale for him. There's, it, there's no like graduated like thing. It's like all this and all that. And I think that's, that's part of it. So what are you going to do? What are you going to do? So what else? I think we talked about everything. I don't have much to say today, but I still managed to ramble on for 23 minutes. So there you have it. So, oh yeah, no, we've done, we've done chiropractors, massage therapy, which does help us both a lot. Um, and the chiropractors, of course, and it's just every once in a while, it's the luck of the draw and it still goes south on you, but oh, thank you, Jennifer. I appreciate that. Yeah. I'll let you know when it gets here. If she doesn't send me the instructions with it, then we'll see. Yes. All right, guys. Well, don't forget, um, check out the Facebook, the Instagram, and the Twitter. I do post on there frequently, some weeks more frequently than others. Um, We'll be back again on Sunday. Don't forget to uh, check out the Patreon. There's other things on there that we don't have on our regular YouTube channel, of course. And um, hopefully once Mike's back's healed a little bit, and hopefully maybe 
in the next few days or this weekend, he'll be able to uh, put a new video up or and update that a little bit more again. And I have the app for Patreon, so I'm always posting on, on there um, little things. So there you have it. <laughs> I did. I just gave him the whole, whole old heave-ho out of bed. That's exactly what happened. Get up, you lazy bum, and kicked him. No, I'm just kidding. That never happened. But, uh, yeah, so make sure you do that, you guys, and thanks for hanging out with me. Make sure you uh, like the video. There's no reason not to like it. I didn't, I didn't kick your puppy, so just go ahead and like the video. Share the video. Uh, tell your friends. There's some good ideas for picky eaters and get your kids to eat more healthy and for yourself to eat more healthy. And uh, make sure you click the bell so you get the notifications when we go live or when we post new content. And thanks for your supporting the channel. We're almost to 23,000 subscribers. We're getting closer. We're getting closer. So, yay. Thanks, guys. Have a great rest of your day, and we'll see you on Sunday. I shall be sporting some blood, most likely, because I will be up to here in chicken processing. So, all right, guys. Have a good one. See y'all later.